Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video, I will ask and answer the question, what if Starship and Super Heavy were a regular launcher? The first and second stages of a regular launcher, not reusable, regular fairing on top. What kind of payload capacity would they be able to bring to orbit? And so this is a capacity test. Uh, what is being left behind, if you will, if uh, in turning a Starship and Super Heavy into reusable vehicles. And just a reminder, we are using the tested numbers for Raptor. They will probably be better eventually. And But right now, uh, the Raptor sea level gets 1779 kilonewtons in vacuum and uh, 355 vacuum ISP there. And the vacuum engines, which of course will be on the Starship, that's the vacuum ones, they get 1957 kilonewtons and 380 vacuum ISP, though that's probably optimistic actually, that should be lower than that. But uh, that's what we have right now as far as the thrust. They are supposed to be eventually upgraded to higher thrust, but that requires higher chamber pressure. We will find out when SpaceX gets to those uh, higher numbers, but for now this is what I've got. If they are at higher numbers and there's uh, some announcement of that, uh, please do tell me so that I can change the numbers here. But we will test it with these numbers right now. The other information that we may be interested in as we go up super heavy here, of course we don't have any reusability. The fins are built into the model of the super heavy, so that's not separate. I mean, it's difficult to separate those out in terms of, well, how much mass are they going to be anyway? That's just a question mark. The fairing, we just have a regular fairing here, and it just uh, contains a regular avgas tank. Of uh, And also communication and controller for 200 tons. And the fairing size, 8.4 tons for both, which is not too bad. And here, 84 tons of tank, so it's about a dry mass of 7% is what we're talking about here. Uh, fairly reasonable, assuming, you know, reasonably cheap construction instead of trying to go for optimal construction, which might be ex more expensive. And the super heavy tank includes the inner stage. Of course, neither stage includes the engines as far as the dry mass. And this dry mass is 6.5% of the total mass of the stage. Uh, so that's pretty good considering it includes the inner stage. And yeah, and then we have the engines at the bottom. So uh, my initial estimate is that it's going to get 200 tons to orbit, but we're not entirely sure about that. Note that it c can't do too much more than this because the sea level thrust to weight ratio is 1.22 already. So we can't really overburden it too much more unless the engines get upgraded, okay? So let's take it outside, launch it, and see what happens. Uh, probably need to shuffle around the stages a little bit. So this is what it looks like as a regular launcher. Throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. It's still pretty loud. And launch. Really got to figure out those plumes eventually. All right, looking good so far. The thrust to weight ratio that the second stage starts off with is not particularly good because again, it's pretty overburdened with 200 tons on it instead of the rated 100 tons. Some people ask me to put Falcon 9 boosters on Starship or I mean Super Heavy and I don't really understand that. <laughs> uh, I mean I don't think they understand how much power Super Heavy has. The best thing to do if you want to boost up Super Heavy is just upgrade the engines. Putting Falcon 9 boosters isn't gonna do a whole lot. Each Falcon 9 booster is like 10% of the thrust of the Super Heavy itself. You need a whole lot to make a difference because, yeah, I mean, you're adding 
10% of the thrust, but then you're also adding a bunch of dry mass and fuel, so it's not really giving it that much of a boost at that point. I think I might have been a bit too shallow for the low thrust to weight ratio here. Okay, things are looking good. I want to make sure that we have enough time to wap wapsis for the next stage. Again, it starts out with 0.76 thrust to weight ratio, which is harsh. Okay, first stage is out, separation and ignition. Time to wap waps, this is going down in a hurry. Total burn time for the stage right now is 6 minutes and 8 seconds left. It's not very unlike uh, Falcon 9 upper stage. And if you put the maximum payload of a Falcon 9 on the Falcon 9, it would end up a lot like this. Though uh, Falcon 9, of course, has not carried its maximum payload before. Okay, going for payload fairing separation. I want to be conservative about it and only release them in space, just in case they were heavy enough to collide with the body of this. It also sort of reminds me of the second stage of Saturn V in terms of the thrust weight ratio and the burn time. Okay, we have flattened out and I think we've got enough. Might have made a, been able to carry just a little bit more. It would have been an even slower ascent from the launch pad though. I think It'd be better just to keep some buffer. Okay, 242 by 205 with 114 meters per second left. And the payload is 200 tons, 200.1 tons. So, there you have it. That is, that'll be my conclusion, 200 tons with uh, these engines. The configuration being uh, 3 vacuum, 3 C level burning for the entire time, uh, the thrust numbers and ISP numbers I shared, and then 37 on the first stage, and the tanks as I mentioned earlier. So, yep, 200 tons. Basically, it carries half its uh, potential payload in keeping the reusability intact. So, with that conclusion, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.